Uh, we are doing first two chapters of uh, responsible administrator. So there are more than seven chapters and we will cover the entire book. Uh, we will do this in terms of certain questions. Okay. For example, ethics is a science of human intentionality. What does it mean? I posted this material to the vehicle at all. Ethics is a science of human intentionality. If you want, you can go to that vehicle. So ethics is a science of human intentionality. What does it mean? What are the important words in this? Remember, examination is going to be like this only. They just make a statement and ask you to write. What are the important words in this? Science and intentionality. Sir, that uh, link is not available. What? Wakelet sir, that is link. Not... Sir, I cannot download from Wakelet. You can't download from Wakelet. Yes, sir. Let's see whether you can view it. No, sir. Click on the Wakelet. Click on the click. Click on it. Yes, sir. I'm opening, but when I click on the PDF, uh, sir, it shows. Error. Sir, I am able to download. Maybe I will share the link here. It is not PDF. It is not PDF. Sir, whatever that link is, it, it is showing error. Maybe you should uh, open in a new page. I am able to access it. Wakelet on civil services. Are you doing that? Sir, uh, the responsible administrator. Ah, yes. Wakelet on civil services. Yes, yes. sir. Books, books slash approach. Hmm? There, there, you have posted it on books or approach wakelet. No, I posted it on a separate wakelet called civil services. Let me see if I. If even I am able to see in the books. Uh... Wakelet, sir. I'm okay. able to download. Okay, okay. Just one second. Maybe I didn't share this wakelet. I'll. Yeah. Hmm. Now try this wakelet posted just now. Civil services. Click on it. Okay, you are able to get the wakelet. Then there is one item, civil services. Is it clear? Karim, is it clear to you? Yes, sir, it is clear. Hmm. Responsible administrator. Okay, Sunil. Yes, sir. Uh, Devansh, what is the problem? Click on the wakelet. Yes, sir. You you are you are, you got it right. Uh, sir, so this chapter one is it is this exactly. a link? Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Ethics is a science of human intentionality. Why is it called a science and why is it called a human intentionality? Sir, may I? Oh, please, Sunil. Sir, because people, according to the situation, theorize what actions to take once they realize that that action was good or bad. Okay. So it is a science. 
why should it be good or bad why should it be good if if the situation uh, i mean the outcome come out uh, as desired by the person or it come out to be good very good very good you understand why we did greek thought you are not confused <laughs> i i read some part of the book also but it is complex for me it is very complex so i am not recommending please i almost wanted to say don't do this but i felt okay if you, you people are want to read something instead of reading all kinds of rubbish this is better sir uh, i don't just one second just so... one second just one second devansh so do you know what you did uh, sunil it's marvelous people will be confused if you are asked why should you be good why are you asking but you said we are asking <laughs> the outcomes are desirable do you know that's not an easy answer because we demystified ethics we removed that element they said okay happiness this or that okay it is good good in this sense does it promote happiness like this and now one more tip for your answer just one more additional thing to your answer can you tell me what else can you do other than explaining what you just explained only one thing if you do that i can tell you this your preparation is over just tell me one thing what else you should do according to what theory we are arriving at that is one next give examples and you can ask one more tip i am giving you where should i get examples sir all the 40 case studies you did from that book there are examples only i am giving you very 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 powerful tip they want memorize case studies in a case like this in a case like this there is an example you have theories you have examples and you understood the essence that's all that's all the initial problem is what is science intentionality ethics what is all this when you can understand that ethics is all about getting a desirable outcome you know so much of confusion is gone it just finished you are no longer confused by words like ethics and um, just understand go <gasps> i am impressed but let me tell you in this examination if you talk to a person who topped a very high score you may find him very very dumb and you are very intelligent but when you see your score i am just repeating yesterday's class you will think why why did i get this poor score and why that dumb fellow who is not confident of what is ethics got so much it is because he gave quantity we have examples quotation that this though not having an accurate understanding but to repeat the essence of last class you get the essence core understanding and to that give your quantity and your paper will stand ahead of anybody else what you said is the core and there is nothing more to it let me tell you 
only this happens to be my role i don't have any other role actually i can't give you tons of information and then say do this no i just cannot cover it through information i can only say these are the ways you can go wrong and this is the way please do it the rest is your work okay in certain topics i can give you these are all the questions these the information and the questions are not going to be uh, unpredictable and you handle it but this paper is not like that Sunil, are you convinced? Sir, I do not. Uh, I mean, I am not feeling the thing that I said that it is so impactful. But I, I think I am getting something. It is impactful. People will be shocked if they are asked, "Why should you be good?" They won't dance. They won't be able to dance. Why? You know, we should be good, right? That God does. No. <clears throat> If not today, one day you will realize. Maybe. <laughs> okay, Devansh. Now tell me, you followed our conversation, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. What do you say? Is the answer completed? Yes, sir. Hmm. Core theory examples. Examples coming from memorized case studies. Devansh, convinced? Yes, sir. Are you convinced that your understanding can be a positive asset? Can be an asset rather than a liability? Yes, sir. I am not doubting my understanding. Exactly. No. no no you are not doubting your understanding but are you doubting the utility of your understanding to the examination no sir no sir because uh, especially in this paper 4 i uh, earlier uh, watching mm. reflective questions i thought that i was uh, not getting anything but now mm. i can uh, get a deeper understanding of why things were said that so that true. understanding actually increases my speed in the exam that is true i am happy i am happy because some students complain sir we understand better but what to do when the people who don't understand get so high marks and i am not but what should i do <laughs> i can only give approach that is a problem that is why i am saying what i said in the last class understanding is only a part of the examination unfortunately around that understanding if you can't generate quantity your answer is inferior though in a better system they should judge your understanding and then say okay the rest is clerical they are not able to do that okay so that is why i am worried i am concerned let me tell you from day one my ethics students are super confident the problem was marks they always felt that they understood lives transformed and all that but when it comes to marks there is a gap they don't think they are inferior to none they don't think they are inferior to any but why marks like anybody else sir because all these things are needed that's what the exam is okay now we are getting the clues thinkers quotations and then case studies examples memorize case studies memorize just case studies convert all the case studies into examples okay maintain an excel sheet 
clash of interest this 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 superior in asking this 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 politician unfavorable speaks just memorize only after memorizing you can get that speed okay that is the reason why they talk about multiple revisions okay so now that you understood what to do let us focus on the core <clears throat> next law is moral minimum karim you answer this law is moral minimum maybe um, meaning like a minimum like minimum level or minimum standard it will set Mm. but to be for the for a person to be ethical something like that mm. so what does it mean you are just explaining you are just explaining the statement you should do something in a way that it is something more can i take just, just let just wait here wait here people explain that statement it is not that okay it is it is about what is the statement that you make which includes that but something more it is like that you should try if you are trying an interpretation of course that's like what you are wrong wrong's hmm. theory of justice uh, we can quote here also hmm not what you can quote what is the question law is moral minimum change the statement what is that what what does he want to say why did he say law is moral minimum at least to uh, have minimum ethical standard we need law uh, i mean without law there might not devansh we cannot hmm is it about why we need law ha ah, bharat you want to say something please sir sir it's it's like bharat are you always the minimum standards jenia you can talk hello bharat you can talk or you are doing journey no sir i can talk fine hmm. sir uh, can you repeat the statement once law, law is a moral minimum. minimum that is second statement it is in the yeah, sheet uh, uh, law is a moral minimum means like uh, you shouldn't feel you are great because you are hmm? following the law hmm? what is that it's expected of you it's what it's is? expected if you follow law it's expected of you it's not like i am i'm doing something great okay fine you are only explaining sir uh, maybe it tells Just about one the second let bharat complete bharat did you complete you can switch on the video if it is okay bharat did you complete uh, yes sir that's it that's all deepthi deepthi sir hmm law is moral minimum what is your comment uh sir when we look at morality as as at various levels for example highest level of morality maybe we can give example of gandhi ji who experiments and finds newer dimensions then there will be morality of a of a minimum of a common man who who is uh, struggling to survive so he might see he might see a different level of ethics he can follow and he can't follow beyond that but law sets a minimum standard for everybody to follow it is like it is written everybody has to follow otherwise society will punish okay but what does it explain what does it say you are only explaining it says the minimum level of morality that everybody should it says to. that but what do, why does it say that oh, okay. sir can i take one minute ah oh, sure thank you these are not like mathematical equations that if you solve the equation you are, you solve the problem it is like using that statement statement and then what does it imply what does he want to say it should be like that it should not be common sense 
देवांश सर मे बी इट टेल्स द इंटरफेस बिटवीन लॉ एंड मोरालिटी एंड हाउ लॉ डिराइव फ्रॉम मोरालिटी एंड मोरालिटी इज मोर देन लॉ ओके you can say law is moral minimum it is not enough if you are lawful there is something more than that that's it morality is something more only the worst thing is prevented through law by confining to law by confining to legal thing you are only doing the minimum don't confine always go beyond law much above law think of ethical things think of moral things law because going by law is only doing the minimum just say don't confine to the law because that is only minimum is that clear then what did i do i made a statement which has a meaning okay so with that you are saying that i understood the statement this how i am going to address this is my answer don't confine to the minimum it is on okay see what is possible the civil servant should not be confined only to the rules because that is only the minimum is it clear okay so never never think by explaining you are answering no get the deeper meaning these are not such uh, great uh, quizzes or a great uh, what is that conan drums where if you explain it is solved it is not like that it is not conan drum it is too obvious so you have to see what does it imply why is it said like this what should i do what does it mean so don't confine to law is the meaning by doing everything only by doing only what is lawful you only end up doing the minimum see what you can do okay it is like that so law is is not the guideline is not the upper limit it is a minimum so every person should do what he can possibly do so law is only the moral minimum <clears throat> okay and of course when law is moral in the first place third sometimes laws need to be challenged on ethical grounds this we discussed okay why laws don't fit the constitution don't fit the people okay unjust laws are possible law is what binds people through collective action through legal action police judiciary but law can be unjust and why should it be fought it should be fought and should be challenged to create a better society to create an ethical society okay so law and morality are not one and the same sometimes they coincide sometimes they don't when they don't one should fight to create a better political system better economic system okay so i put these questions because i just wanted to be clear the, about law morality and the connections now devansh sir uh, hmm. i have not read this uh, book so can i follow the discussion is it compulsory to read that no no i think you can just follow the discussion you need not read not necessary okay you can refer to it now and then because and you anyway have it that's all you don't have to read it fine 
just follow the discussion okay sir in fact there is nothing more in that it is just out of what he said i i created certain sentences to which you can respond is like that ha huh. next sir to find out hmm sir uh, so we are discussing the codes here right but uh, when we solved the questions like virtue is knowledge there we went on to explain the statement and uh, and give uh, examples but here mm-hmm. in this case we are going beyond and explaining and not explaining the sentence itself i mean explaining but i mean so which so you are saying that why beyond approach- because virtue is knowledge is very difficult to crack if you can explain that is good enough okay 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 but this is law is moral minimum what is there in explaining so you have to create a plot but she is knowledge is very different statement to make out what is that so explanation if the question is difficult just explain that will do but the question is so easy so you have to find out what is this about it's too obvious law is moral minimum is like that always give a push even when if it is difficult explain it through examples always push push remember it is through edge only you clear the examination not through that common thing so through common you don't fail but after that through edge in each question you should try for an edge in a difficult question if you can resolve it you have an edge in easy question there is nothing to resolve so you do all kinds of things okay next <clears throat> see the title of the book is the responsible administrator an approach to ethics for the administrative role here he defines responsibility okay responsibility is one word examiner also uses often responsibility what is responsibility this is how he he looks at it responsibility defines the scope of accountability in the context of law as well as culture this you can remember responsibility is the scope of accountability what are you accountable for you may think he is using words another word but it is the same problem that may be true scope of accountability accountability means if something goes wrong can you be held responsible that's all sort of accountability so scope of accountability in the context of law as well as culture that is an interesting thing he is not saying as per the law law as well as the culture so who is responsible administrator he is doing whatever he is held to be accountable in the context of law as well as culture why culture is also inclu- included many times law doesn't specify law okay again it is a minimum law violation will invite a problem but law following is not much one should do something much more than following the law law is good law is a thing that should not be violated so it is a it is any it is a tool to understand what cannot be done rather than what can be done because what can be done is something much more than what law permits law is good to fi- identify what cannot be done it is not good to identify what can be done because law doesn't deal with what can be done law only deals with what cannot be done and should not be done law is about the punishment law is not about the reward system it is about punishment if you don't do this punishment okay so in the context of law and culture the culture is about expectations history the past other institutions are work how other institutions are working okay so scope of accountability in the context of law as well as culture responsibility in a democratic context does not end with acting ethically this i found is a very serious statement you saying responsibility in a democratic context does not end with acting ethically 
how can it be not end with acting ethically the author wants to say it is not enough to act but you should be able to explain your action and he defines responsible administrator like this go through the next sentence responsible administrator must be able to account for their conduct to relevant others such as supervisors elected officials courts and the citizenry you can remember this and you can use it as a quotation terry l cooper from this book so responsible administrator must be able to account for their conduct to relevant others such as supervisors elected officials the courts and the judiciary four people are included he should explain to the supervisor can he do something wrong and explain to the citizenry also no he may be explained to his superiors when the superiors also are in are in collusion organization is not doing what it is supposed to do but superiors have accepted that is how the organization works then you can explain to the superiors see this how we are doing we are anyway polluting and i have not contributed to more pollution it's going on like that you can explain to your superior but you can explain that to the citizenry no explain in court no elected officials elected official means he is not using the word politicians because you don't explain to politicians politicians all kinds of people are politicians but elected official basically ministers okay elected officials okay other such as supervisors elected officials courts and judiciary so he is saying responsible administration is not simply about doing right but they should explain that why it is right okay it is not only doing right so number 1 not simply following the law but much more because the law is only minimum be ethical and be ethical includes not only doing things rightly but understand why those things are rightly right why have you done like that you should be able to understand and explain and that is why he thinks knowledge of discipline of physics is important because not only you not only it helps you to do right it helps you to go beyond the law because law is the minimum and then it helps you to identify what is the right action and then it helps you to explain to others why such a thing is right all this is part of responsibility of a civil servant okay devan are you clear sir uh... Hmm. here uh, when you told about the differentiation of how we can explain to citizen be supervisor and others hmm. so uh, sir is it implicit uh, i mean uh, yes. or uh, has he explained this uh, like the way you have exactly he thinks that is what is being a responsible administrator it means cooper is giving a very wide definition of what is responsibility responsibility is not simply serving your minister so the role of the bureaucrat is much wider that is the point he is making sir but then do we see uh, our bureaucrats do this uh, they are not doing it but some people thought 
people should do it and that is why they included this ethics paper <laughs> they are not doing it and that is the reason right why we have this paper thinking that this paper will make people different why do the otherwise why did so many questions and superiors telling you bad things and you are not supposed to do them <laughs> okay they are not doing it but they want to tell you what we are doing is not right students know that taking money is wrong they may take it later but they know that it is wrong corruption is wrong bribery is wrong but many other things are not they don't think they are part of their duty and responsibility they think that now we join the system we have to follow the system it's all they gang up they like a mafia gang they follow mafia rules that is wrong yes you watch that movie right what is that jay bhim yes jay bhim is good what did police officer do he didn't try to save the police he went responded he said his conscience okay but finally he was in a position to explain if you go by this this definition prakash raj acted like a responsible administrator that's all but then meanwhile he he had heard many 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 officials including his superior the superior also wanted to give money to that woman and then hush up but prakash raj refused why because there was one lawyer who was fighting it out so people think simply going by the superiors is responsibility no that is mafia that is not an administrator is responsible ultimately to the citizens people think that they are selected to one mafia gang and they should follow the mafia rules it is not like that public administration is different even in private administration there are private administration rules but when they are working against the larger framework then one has to respond okay if he is putting a competitive price then you should not reveal that price to the your organization's rival that would be unethical but if this organization is harming the larger context larger society then it is your duty to report loyalty doesn't operate there because that organization can compete with another organization and offer something at a lower price and you should be loyal to that you should be faithful you should not reveal you are loyal to the organization but when that organization is involved in damaging the country damaging the larger public then you should loyalty doesn't arise there so these are the things that they want you to understand so ethics is not about organizational loyalty organizational loyalty remember there is one aspect of it but there are limits to which loyalty can be stretched okay so these are theoretically being clarified that is why i like this book is it clear devansh yes sir hmm sir hmm went out uh, hmm. the statement responsibility in a democratic context does not end with acting ethically ethically so can hmm. we uh, bring in the js mills point of view that 
majoritarianism we shouldn't go by the majoritarianism but oh, because it is for the greater good but by what you really want to do hmm? what is that sir, majoritarianism uh, sir i'm 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 bringing the uh, greatest good for greatest people so that kind of ethical perspective so js mill was greatest against... good of for the greatest people is a wrong principle hmm. right that is right. a wrong principle that is called, that would be majoritarianism right sir so mm-hmm. can i can we bring that uh, going act, uh, acting ethically it does not end with acting ethically so i am i am bringing majoritarianism as as the ethical perspective that people believe in i'm and i am going beyond but who why do you think majoritarianism is ethical at all no i am not thinking i am thinking people would think so so i'm going beyond that to justify the statement which statement you are trying to justify so responsibility in a democratic context does not end with acting ethically huh so the previous statement oh huh? responsibility in a democratic context does not end with acting ethically oh, so okay. i am i am just disputing the belief that people have that greatest good for the greatest people is ethical but i am disputing but why are you that? accepting that you can you can reject that is not ethical at all why do you think that is ethical and then going beyond because he is saying something more even after assuming that what is ethical that doesn't end that is what he is saying okay because his point is you should be able to explain that is a point he is saying even if you don't go by the greatest good and then you go by human rights principle still he would say that statement is right so this is about not simply behaving but ability to explain so he has a point to make there he is not going by higher ethical principle or a right ethical principle whatever you apply acting is not enough there is something more you should be able to explain why you acted so it is like that sir why so much focus on uh, explanation because um, bureaucracy is involved in educating accountability people's participation and many things somehow it is not secretly doing something right of course certain things will be done secretly but after some time they will no longer be secret secret so it is about uh, educating people doing things uh, uh, together uh, uh, collective collectivity all these things record keeping future reference there are many things that is what the bureaucracy okay is it clear okay so why a decision is made so that in future people will make decisions like that this is the criteria so basically cooper is looking at administration in a broader context which included educating the people and if the decisions go wrong then the people will know why they are wrong this is what i did this is the context in fact in america after few years documents are declassified so that the people will know why decisions have been made like that and what what they have learned and why how things could have been different so bureaucrat is involved in this process he has to increase the, the wisdom of the system over the years he has to contribute to that but it is a very complex thing we just do it do it and explain this what it is and later somebody improve on it you do what you think is right that can be questioned but let others know 
just doing your role and explaining this is it. Okay. And also, when he has to explain to so many people at different levels, definitely Dacian has to be good. But it does not mean you have to explain then and there. It's not like that. not making things public, but ability to explain is different from explaining the addition at that point of time, not like that. Politicians do certain things, but they will never be able to explain at any time. So that's why they hide things. But he's saying, no, you shouldn't. You should be able to explain. If it is of sense to nature, don't explain it now, but one day, explain should be explained. It is such a decision you should take now. And many times the decisions are like that. That time, it is very explosive. But after that, people will have a different opinion on that issue. Okay, so he is saying why Ethics education is very important because that's a part of making or creating a responsible administration. Okay. Responsibility is also about a role. Performing the role of a civil servant is responsibility. Okay. Role, responsibility, accountability. Fine. Okay. And next, look at the things that he is Look at the various dimensions. In this definition, he said supervisors, elected officials, courts, and citizenry. Four. And then he also says in working out alternatives or solutions, there are six dimensions. This can be useful in, when you are writing options. Number one, short term and long term, two dimensions. And then personal level, organizational level, Social level, legal level. Okay, personal, organizational, social. Okay, three. Personal, organizational, social. Long term, short term. So, personal, how is your decision impacting your family? Many case studies, your brother is involved, got in police station, what would you do? Personal level. Your office, organizational level, beyond your office, larger society, that society. So when we said that you, you give a larger context, Cooper is only saying these are all the levels of thinking of any particular edition. Personally, you will lose. You may lose your job, but organizationally, it may benefit. Sometimes you lose personally, organization in the short term may lose, long term may gain. That is another. Our organization has no reason to go, no reason to exist. It has to lose. But in this process, society will gain. Cambridge Analytics. Some organizations, they have, to, you will lose. You may be punished. Organization also will lose. But then society will be benefited. So what is this thinking? Thinking in terms of three levels. What happens to you? What happens to the organization? What happens to the society? And then long term and short term. So what it means is that he is putting formally, these are all the dimensions of decision making. So when superior asks you to do something before deciding not to do or to do, these are all the aspects. What happens to me personally? What happens to the organization? What happens to society? So what Prakash Raj did in that, in that movie? Personally, of course, he was not affected, but it could have been affected. But police force, short term, yes, negative, but long term, good society 
definitely good so long run and short run is one dimension personal organizational and social level okay so cooper is giving many dimensions to what is called responsibility okay even if you do all of them acting is one and the ability to explain is another so responsible administrator to cooper means all these aspects okay next sir hmm Sir, so we can use these dimension of personal of organizational and exactly. social to explain whistle blowing. Yes. Very much, very much. This is the way it to helps. Do it. it helps socially and in long term, but uh, short term, it, there exactly. is a damage to mm. organization. Mm. Mm. Because sir, there Cooper was a gives... case study on uh, Edward exactly. Snowden whistle blowing. Mm -hmm. Everything. So Cooper gives a design. Okay, here a flow chart of. design of how to solve ethical dilemmas okay it's a very good book okay because he he brought it out so conceptually let me tell you why i have very very poor opinion of uh, many books is that they don't first of all they don't even know what ethics is they think that do good and be good according to the society is ethical so they think in terms of how are you how do you make the administrator man of integrity so much is 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 not is not right following rules is ethical they don't see loss can be unethical so so much of literature on what is that for uh, um all kinds of reports prc reports and those committee recommendations horrible and public administration scholars have written mohit bhattacharya i was shocked they don't even understand what is ethics and uh, what is ethics is debatable what the society thinks is right need not be right they don't bring that at all what the society thinks corruption need not be corruption what the society thinks is right can be corruption these are the things that any writing on ethics should consider but there is no such awareness they don't question they don't ask what is ethical they have an idea of what is ethical and then uh, they are interested in how to make this administrator ethical that is why that is the reason why i asked you to do machiavelli my class and then what machiavelli taught machiavelli is, is most ethical but people have an idea of ethical means do this do that that is not ethical that is self destructive they themselves don't fall and they ask you to be ethical <laughs> but they think that no that it cannot be followed they ask you to follow it is not ethical what cannot be followed how can that be ethical it is not ethical in the first place so they don't make the student think they don't make the administrator think i was horrified by that literature i was horrified by so many guides written on based on that literature so much of public administration literature is like that so in that context i was shocked by this book responsible administrator one sensible man at last writing in a very sensible way and in the bureaucratic context okay so books are misleading because you know they never studied ethics formally they have never they don't they they don't think that ethics is a subject so they have successfully conveyed to the students that ethics is not a subject and just writing some smart answers okay 
So that is why I appreciate your answers, Vinay. <laughs> because I was horrified by those committee's reports on ethics. Sheer nonsense. And most of the toppers have written those recommendations. Mm, recommendations, absolute nonsense. Committee's recommendation, how to be ethical, how to be man of integrity. It's wrong. I am convinced of one thing. They don't think that ethics is a kind of a discipline which needs to be inquired and looked into. They don't even have that conception. People don't have a conception that physics is not a discipline, right? They think they don't know physics. They don't say, what is their physics? And I know it. But for ethics, they have such an idea. What is their? I know it. So it is like that. So they're only worried about how to make a student ethical, how to make administration ethical. Okay. This book does not commit any such mistakes. It is elegant, accurate. The other knows what he is talking. I knew they were wrong. I was unhappy with the literature, but I did not know what should what I should do. Okay, I was just angry. But this book helped me. I read it only last year. I was shocked. Because I did read Indian writers' ethics books, like Mohit Bhattacharya, Ramesh Kharora. Ramesh Kharora is an expert. The RC reports. Oh. Because I could see they were conceptually wrong. So I was felt I felt relieved and happy when I read Cooper's book. It's conceptually sound, clear, and helpful to the examination. Because you know, in the examination, student was never sure why I should after all follow the superior, why should I be concerned about other things? But this man is saying very clearly. This is what the administration is for, a responsible administrator, finally to the citizenry. Do you know how, where she, uh, she got Devan? Uh, Divya had this understanding that it should be for the citizens, whether she read it in philosophy or whatever. Okay, we, we did it in one of our interview classes and uh, she accepted. I mean, she just found it, yes, that is, it's like that. Okay, so people think that uh, responsibility means being a part of a mafia. No, I'm not a part of mafia. So he's giving the structure of the answer, personal, social, sorry, in between organizational. Long-term, short-term. Acting, explain. So look at how many dimensions you have. You got many dimensions. Okay. So next quotation, uh, statement six. Ethical standards and sensitivity are crucial to the responsible use of discretion. This is an important question. What is discretion? Discretion is you have a range within the law range of action, which you will act is a matter of discretion. You could have given, not given, did this, did that, nothing illegal. So what do you do? What, what is a responsible use of discretion? You used your discretion in the right way. How will you do it? Maintaining ethical standards and then sensitivity if you are sensitive and then ethical standards, then we'll give rise to a responsible use of discretion. He's saying many things. Discretion is a range. You have that power. 
because within that anything is possible so what is the responsibility now he is looking at responsibility in different way given that range which will you choose that depends upon the standards that you maintain and sensitivity why is sensitivity is, is important because through sensitivity you feel what are the others problems is there a better way to approach it is not simply rational next ethical public administrator requires a theoretical perspective on the role of public administrator this is just what we discussed just now ethical public administrator requires a theoretical perspective what we are giving giving is a theoretical perspective so when we said responsible administrator is responsible to these things that is a theoretical perspective ethical theories are essential ingredients in a professional ethic but they are only a beginning he is saying theories are ingredients theories explain but why are they only a beginning because different theories say different things context is very diverse so these theories will help and finally you have to you have to it is something more which theory will you choose and how sense to many other things as you know that whatever you learn is a is a beginning next code of ethics which is the official statement of appropriate conduct that reflect noble but often general and abstract principles is no guarantee of ethical conduct in an organization he is saying there is a code of ethics code of ethics you can take the code of ethics definition we will give you later also as something like this official statements of appropriate conduct that reflect noble and general and abstract principles okay code of ethics is official statement of appropriate conduct representing some general principles is no guarantee of ethical conduct there is a code of ethics but what makes you think that the people will follow code of ethics not necessarily so why would they follow code of ethics okay why code of ethics um, may not be followed because people often find code of ethics is something and the situation is different code of ethics says this but what should i do okay code of ethics says don't take gifts but what does it mean which gift what is a gift what is the difference between a gift and a bribe i didn't go to that ticket free ticket case i didn't go but i was trapped what should i do so what is code of ethics code of ethics gave one thing but there are so many things and the situation is so complex so that is why you need to have ethical theories reasoning training okay and you should yourself have the standards and sensitivity okay code of ethics gives one it some general but there is nothing to guarantee that people will follow it next 10 public accountability in a heterogeneous society requires reasoned application of ethical principles rather than metaphysical assertions what does he mean public accountability in a heterogeneous society he is bringing the concept of heterogeneous society why is it heterogeneous society It requires reasoned application of ethical principles rather than metaphysical why what is the role of heterogeneous society in a heterogeneous society heterogeneity means there are different cultures a caste has a different kinds of guidelines religion has a different tribe has a different so what makes an ethical administrator in fact helping brother is regarded as ethical helping your caste is ethical so caste says something religion is something okay and they they are not subjected to same cultural influence so what is moral to one group is not moral to other group so heterogeneity means lack of consensus regarding what is a right action so it is here the concept of constitutional morality comes administrator has to follow constitutional morality rather than the morality of his caste or religion or a kin group what is constitutional morality 
what we what the constitution regards as moral as given in the preamble okay the constitution looked at heterogeneity in a different way what is how did he look at rawls theories protect equal is so like this reservations like this so many provisions protection of the culture basic rights so many things okay so uh, heterogeneity makes the person forces the person to think differently from one's own cultural upbringing because his cultural upbringing doesn't match with the expectations of the political system or the politicals or the job that he is expected to do so it's in india's case it's much much more modern it doesn't match india's what is required to do of an indian administrator is something different from what his culture his social or cultural background requires him or expects him to do so these are cultural issues the case of you are you got into civil service your caste calls you to felicitate you should you go as one you are already in caste association calls you will help should you go these are the issues okay so heterogeneity means diverse groups diverse groups pressures and pulls what is regarded as ethical by that group what is regarded as moral we normally call it moral by that group varies so in this challenging situation what should an administrator be okay for example we discussed a case she belongs to a minority culture she is a muslim and the situation was a communal right minister is a hindu that's a that is a case of heterogeneity okay in the heterogeneous context what is the role of administration There are sensitive issues. Caste is one issue. The Dalit collector versus Kamma Dalit fight in a village. Heterogeneity. Okay. So uh, heterogeneity provides kinds of challenges which are different. Next, how would I defend this? He is saying, how would I defend this particular option if required to do so before a broad audience? Is one way of out of ethical dilemma? Yes. How would I explain to a broader audience? That is one way. Definitely, if you work like a mafia, you can't explain. But another other hand, you work on a broader principles. You can explain. what prakash raj did he can explain to a large audience what what other people did they are very secretive they can explain to few people and then congratulate themselves but they can't explain to everybody okay but remember ability to explain is not the same thing as explain because ability to explain can be there and it may not be explained then because always decisions have secretive element informal element that's a different issue okay so ability to explain is not the same thing as whether he can explain president cannot make decisions in a way that he can explain then and there he cannot make a single decision like that because there will be so many negotiations which cannot be explained which should not be explained but after some time in a new when the situation changes he should be able to explain this is the situation and that is why act for okay, reason so don't think that a public administrator is making a decision public and everything is public and everything public approved no it is not like that there is a time lag ability to explain is not the same thing as explaining administration is not a is is not not everything than public it is not like that so ability to explain next to the extent that we cultivate pattern of consistently acting in ways that combine sound reasons with effective confidence we develop integrity yes let us discuss the word integrity come to 13th point also 
development of ethical autonomy calls for awareness of one's own values as well as external obligations under which values are derived yes so it is about values and obligations okay here he makes what is a i'll come to 12th i didn't discuss integrity 13th development of ethical autonomy calls for awareness of one's own values what is a value value is what you are trying to realize maximization of happiness or happiness that is a value but you want to realize but external obligations under which values are realized external obligation we discussed the case of a powerful politician what do you do you can't just say i will go by rules and rules are a value no you can't go by maximize of happiness that is not possible because there is an external constraint is different so administration is about realization of values in the under as well as external obligations okay how you maximize given your constraints what do you do is the essence of ethical dilemma essence of administration so which means value ordering is important values are when values are in conflict okay then you go you can go through cases of course similar cases you did from that book so before i close let us discuss the concept of integrity many questions on integrity integrity is mentioned in your syllabus also headline ethics in captured in integrity integrity is not just honesty integrity is about unity of action thought feelings absence of fragmentation that is integrity okay in man of integrity is man who is not divided not fragmented okay believes feelings and actions are united okay coming to what socrates is saying who is a man of integrity a man of integrity is the one who will do right thing and he will be happy about it okay if he is doing right thing and he is unhappy that is not integrity okay he is doing wrong thing and he knows that it is wrong it is not integrity okay so man of integrity is is holistic man not divided not fragmented cooper is asking saying how will men of integrity develop unfortunately in many books integrity is used as simple as honesty you are integ man of integrity means you won't take bribes it is not like that uh, he says to the extent that we cultivate a pattern of consistently acting in ways that combine sound reasons with effective conscience we develop integrity that means you don't know whether to go in this direction or that direction you are confused if you go in one way but think you should go in another way then you will lose integrity over a period of time you think you should not be corrupt but without being corrupt you can't survive so you think you you shouldn't be corrupt but you are being corrupt you will lose your integrity on the other hand if you are trained this is the context don't think disobeying your politician is immoral is unethical no disobeying power is immoral no respecting thug is immoral no lying is immoral no cheating is immoral no then what is it what are you doing what is the constraint what are the values this is what i have done so in that way you will learn how to behave then you become confident of yourself that is how you become man of integrity that strength comes on the hand if you simply have values and then say and if the situation is favorable i will follow then many times situation is not favorable then you will develop guilt you will say no i am a bad person 
I wanted to be a good person, but see how I ended up with. You lose your integrity. So Cooper is saying how we should develop men of integrity. Integrity is nothing but values are realized under diverse situations. Then you learn. Why do people lose integrity or why do people become corrupt? I believe basically they want to be honest. They don't want to be corrupt. But they have some idea of this is the way to be honest. This is the way to be man of integrity. And then very soon they realize they can't be. And so they lose themselves. Okay, now we have become like the people whom we used to dislike at one time. They resign. They lose integrity. So Cooper is saying that there should be an ethical training. This is what you want to be. You want to be good. But remember, the situation is not what you imagine. It is different. It is very complex. So in this complex ambience, how do you go about it? And as you develop that ability to resolve those complex situations, then you get, you develop competence. And when you develop competence, then if you solve a particular situation in a particular way, then in a similar situation, you will see, you will apply. For example, you are the director. You wanted to dismiss somebody, but that fellow came in the institute. What do you do? Okay, this is the thing. I'm not going to resign. So next time, similar situation. I want to act but whom I want to act against is more powerful than me. So what do I do? Then a problem resolved. You have a way of re relating. I will dismiss this fellow, but if he comes up again, fine, I will handle it. So then you develop the confidence. That is what integrity is. So integrity doesn't come simply because wanting to be integrated, wanting to be uh, have integrity. Wanting is one, but people really collapse. People really break down because they think you just can't do it. So the training makes people men of integrity. Because essentially, there are values. Values cannot be realized under certain circumstances. So then you have to figure out how to go about. As you develop more training, essentially, I feel ultimately it is about taking it as a challenging situation. This is what I want to do, but the world is not like this. This is not what I expected. What should I do? How do I go about? to resolve. Okay. Resolution is not a compromise. People think it is a compromise. When they think they are compromised, they think they are weak. That is not like that. Maximizing what can be done is not a compromise. That is the way the problem should be solved. If a tough paper is given to you and if you attempted half the paper, it does not mean you compromised. <laughs> you, did, you did. What could be done? You didn't compromise on the remaining paper. Okay. So life is like that. If you have not attempted, if you have not tried, that is a different issue. But the paper is like that. What do you do? Just do your best. That is not a compromise. So people have a wrong idea of what is to be ethical. So from that wrong idea, they think that they have compromised. And because they think they have compromised, they think they have become bad. And so they lose that confidence, strength, and they lose. So that is why Cooper is saying, all these things call for training, ethical training. What is responsibility? How do you need to look at it? What is the role of a police officer? It is very important to know Especially when people are asking, how can you give a bad image to the police people? You are putting down your own subordinates. Won't people think ill of police people? 
so such questions can create confusion if the if the police if the right uh, police officer doesn't have the idea of what he is for if he knows the right remember finally police force is for this and if we do certain wrong things we should be able to correct and let us be open about our corruption our correction that is a part of education anybody makes mistakes so cover things it is very important for administrators to know what is ethical and then only they will know how to be ethical and all this contributes to integrity otherwise situation is in one way and then uh, your values are in another way you just don't know this, this is just the problem with a very person who enters the service i want to do that do this now oh my god i can't do anything here okay so the loose so kupri is saying you have to think of how to train what is ethical what is ethical how to resolve ethical dilemmas how values are realized in a constraining ambience and that realization is ethical not a compromise then that leads to confidence and make them men of integrity ah uh, devansh sir uh, i am not getting this jay bhim analogy sir can you give another analogy how people lose integrity and how they can uh, safeguard their integrity which which example sir, sir this jay bhim i haven't watched the movie so i am not getting uh, what prakash raj did or said so uh, sir any other example of how civil you servants mean you have to... not watched or you have you have watched no sir i have not watch sir no so uh, sir right now an example after you watch i will think of other examples you watch it hmm Sir, you watch it, please. Hmm. Sir, uh, hmm. creating a hypothetical situation. Hmm. Suppose. And uh, anyway, anyway, do, you can quote Jay Bhim in the example also. Exam also. It's a popular movie, and recent one, and it is about police. It is about tribes. It is about law. It is about law. It is about corruption, and very, very, very well made. do you know i thought i would uh, i wanted to watch for one hour i started at 10 o'clock i thought i would watch for one hour and with reluctance i just started because it's about tribal problem i read so much why should i be watch a movie they won't they won't have made it rightly then i was shocked in the first 10 minutes my god what are they doing they are so close to real i thought somewhere they are going to make it a movie no they didn't i was just too absorbed it was shocking they were never they never tempted anywhere to dramatize no though there were many possible cases of dramatizing and they did it in fact they diluted the reality they diluted the reality so much but brought it down please you watch it and we will discuss i was shocked by that more the past 20 minutes is all i was talking what is this extraordinary moment please please watch it and you can quote in the examination there are so many ways in which that movie can be quoted sir jay bhim sir hmm. in uh, yesterday's want? yes sir in hmm. yesterday's case study in that hmm. director example uh, in which you hmm. said that the director should not resign it mm. was written that it is based on a real life incident in which the director resigned hmm that is stupid of him so he lost his integrity he didn't lose but that is not the way to maintain integrity your integrity should be helpful to the society that is not i gave an example of one person resigning foreign secretary people have praised him wow people think resigning is a great thing no why should resigning be a great thing you resign for a different reason but not for a ground like that 
i am not saying whether he lost integrity but i am not i am saying that there is a better effective action is there with retaining integrity people have a absolute stupid idea of integrity no if you resign that is wrong that's stupid of you that is wrong wrong attitude but i am sure people will glorify wow people will glorify if you give up something that is their attitude <laughs> need not you be you fight fight it out fighting out does not mean compromise no i am not against resigning but resign in a planned way if you think there is a better option do it but not because somebody whom you dismissed came was at a appointed again no to be so stupid unfortunately people think that these are all being moral and ethical that is the reason why they find difficult to be moral without thinking what is their notion of moral and ethical i said i was watching telugu serials now i won't be watching when i was there i was watching i noticed that the in serials particularly i discussed this before but i am giving it again noticed in serials um um bad people are very intelligent good people are stupid bad people they don't have rules bad people have no idea of this is the way they should be bad so they respond to the situation they cheat they do all kinds of things they behave intelligently and on their goals though the director makes it finally they lose but what good people do is that good people are stupid good people have an idea of that this is the way to go to good we should sacrifice that they so they end up being so stupid and you should you shouldn't tell the truth to anybody if if your daughter knows she will suffer and so i will not tell they manipulate they they distort they hide they won't they won't believe in developing competence but all being good only so watching those serials people will think oh my god we should not be good because why do we suffer so much bad people are enjoying life so that is a wrong notion of what is ethical unfortunately that is a popular version of being ethical that is wrong is my point clear so before thinking of becoming good find out what is good it is not self destruct hmm bharat please bharat you raise your hand yes sir sir mm. yes mm. lal bahadur shastri uh, uh, there was a man like yeah, he was Could a minister have been stupid how uh, can a minister be responsible uh, no. for some accident some day yeah so that was that was a stupid decision to resign mm, because he yes. was not responsible for that right mm. but i saw that example in ethics book and like it was ethical that's, right. that's, 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 that's what i am saying that's what i am saying people do not know what is ethics yes sir mm. why ethics yeah. book you can see ethic committees based on ethics to develop ethics the, the notion of ethics is wrong Resign is a is a glorious value. Are like that wrong? You be responsible. That is true. Does not mean you resign because of something else. Unless you you think that by resigning, something else will help. Sometimes resignation would have helped. Manmohan Singh should have resigned when there were so many scams. You know, such resignation would have helped the Congress. Bajpai should have resigned after those Gujarat riots. It would have helped Bajpai. It it would have created a better India also. They didn't resign. They should have. Resignation sometimes helps. There is no doubt about it. 
basically what when is resignation help it is a such a monstrous situation and you have no clue you have nothing then you say through resignation you are making a statement good like socrates made it through death an ips officer uh, who lost his job because of his fighting against uh, narendra modi that is a great thing he is in jail now great thing be in jail that is not immoral that is not unethical because through that he is saying the maximum thing they they returns some people might say that if you continued in service you might have saved some people that is true but then there is a bigger crime there is a bigger threat i want to fight against the bigger one and i cannot fight in service so i am setting an example by inviting punishment jail me finish one more woman from gujarat i don't know where that courage is extraordinary people so invite death resign but do it consciously not stupidly basically when the it is a monstrous situation it is too big it is beyond you and you make a statement through resignation then do it life is more meaningful when you know when to give it up same thing the job job is more meaningful when you know when to leave it should always know when to leave things so resign so resigning can be ethical resigning can contribute to integrity but the grounds should be serious enough not somebody hurt me you are not his uh, servant in the first place to resign you <laughs> they are they will be there for some time and after that they will go you have to find it out okay the same thing about respecting power if it is a local thug then see how and but if it is too big then you just making things public only you express what you you, you can contribute and nothing more like we geeks somebody nothing to fight just express and leave that is what is called whistle blowing whistle blowing at a personal level loss social level gain organizational level can be a loss that is what whistle blowing is okay so what is important is whether you make all these calculations not you are not willing to do a bad thing that is not what is bad should be seen very clearly because life is very 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 complex okay it never never works the way you plan all ethical code all do's and don'ts is is assuming a path but life is not like that it's just very complex so many do's and don'ts see the situation and respond and responding to that is not a compromise that is what ethical is that is my point that is what ethical is not compromise maximization of values under a constraint is ethical not following values is ethical uh, is unethical no there is always a constraint remember nobody has absolute power not only civil servant but prime minister doesn't have absolute power nobody has even a dictator doesn't have always there are constraints so one has to work within the constraints obama got nobel peace prize but does it mean he will do whatever he can he in think of in, in terms of world peace no there is an american foreign policy there are others that this 
like that. American president doesn't have all the power. He may think this is right, but he will not be able to do what he thinks is right. Because if he does that, there will be other constraints. Sometimes you will lose power if you want to do something. You will not be able to even that. So you'll have to think. So value realization under constraints is ethical. As you develop that practice, you become man of integrity. Okay, they want. Sir, so uh, can I put it in this way that uh, many mm -hmm. civil servants, they see ethicality as binary, zero and one. So that is why they lose integrity because they think that they cannot uphold values. Exactly. But mm -hmm. when they start seeing ethicality as shades of gray, that is something that they can achieve uh, as a sort of percentage under given circumstance, then their mm -hmm. integrity actually increases. Mm -hmm. Ethicality as zero and one, why? I mean, uh, sir, uh, they they think that I cannot do this. This is the ethical thing to do. For example, uh, you said that. So just one, just one second. You can't you can't put down that politician, and so you are following. That makes it ethical, sir. Uh, so that so that is uh, the confusion among many civil servants that they think that it is unethical. That it, is exactly, exactly. That is it. So they take it as a compromise. They confuse and think it is exactly. very strict and monolithic kind mm, of thing. Exactly, exactly. Of course, some people use the word they should be practical and pragmatic, but we are saying theoretically that is ethical. Let me tell you, all the so-called honest administrators who are, who are doing some good thing have come to terms with the system. And in a positive way, it is that they know what they can do and what they cannot do. How much is possible? How much is not possible? What is a small thing and what is a big thing? And they go around. Okay. Their language may be different from the, the way we are discussing. What we are discussing is, is theoretically pure. But they will say it is not possible to be ethical. Let us be practical. That's fine. That's fine. But as long as they are not confused, as long as they are not feeling bad about themselves, that's fine. They're just a matter of words. As long as they are fine. But we're just saying very, very clearly, theoretically, this is the situation. So theoretician is different from person who is active. And of course, with a better theory, you become a better actor. So what I'm saying is that honest, successful people they may not define like the way we are doing in the class, but they have a sound relationship with the system. Basically, they think in terms of possible, not possible. Let me do what is possible, like that. Very thing. Okay. We they need not be so theoretically clear as we are doing it. It is not necessary, but they have their own uh, sound equations with the system. Essentially idea what can be done and what cannot be done do what all that can be done and don't worry about what cannot be done very simple which we call ethical they may call practical it doesn't really matter am i clear devansh yes sir so uh, uh, hmm. what i understood that i can do this much i will do this much and i won't exactly. feel bad no kinds exactly. of conscience exactly that's it. Because we are doing a theory with competing alternatives, we are saying precisely that is ethical. Don't be confused. Okay. Sir, one question. Mm. Mm, please. Sir, uh, often uh, we uh, are given the example of uh, IAS Ashok, Ashok Khemkaji. Mm. Uh, he got transferred many times uh, because he always took on politicians. So uh, what should be our take on his ethical thought system? I mean, 
I don't know specifically about that person. We will. I read, but I didn't read uh, in a in a independent way. I will look into that. I look into that. I don't know him. Okay. Next. Uh, so this one uh, understanding I want to have. <clears throat> so if uh, if you are uh, kind of threatened that you will have to take the bribe. Hmm. Else, uh, I know. I nobody is threatened to take bribe. Why? Let's let's say I am just saying. A person is threatened whether if whether something has to be done or not. He will not be threatened to take a bribe. Normally, we will bribe you if you do. But even if you don't take bribe, you, you should do it. You will not be threatened to take a bribe. Nobody has that extra money <laughs> to force it on you. Okay. okay. No, I'll just tell you what honest people maintain. Basically, honest people maintain out of the network. There is a network. Money comes and goes as a part of the share. Honest people are just out of it. That's all. But they are not forcibly brought in. It is not like that. So if somebody refuses money, he will not be threatened. If he refuses work, then what threats follow will be an issue. Nobody will be threatened if he refuses bribe. Nothing like that. Nobody heard of it. If it means if you are refusing bribe because you are not going to do, then what they will do is an issue. That is an issue. No doubt. So, so if a politician wants... Basically, that... successful administrators have an idea of what is a small thing and what is a big thing. Okay, some people may find what, why is this small, but uh, they have an idea of these are small things we should ignore and big things, they're big. Okay. It is like that. So they have an idea that these are small things and you just don't ignore them. That is why they say just... Uh, you take uh, the issue on which you are willing to fight and take the issue, take the issues that you are willing to monitor and do or take the issues, and just ignore. It is like that. So they have an idea that this is the reality, this is what I can do. They need not be theoretically clear. This is just what an idea and they go about it. That's what successful as well as honest people do. There are many people who are successful as well as honest. Okay, Sunil. Hmm. So, sir, if a politician wants his uh, his nephew to be employed, to hmm. be favored by you, because you are, uh, it is your, he, you are, you have that authority, hmm. and if he also threatens you if you don't do it, okay. I will, I will, I will unleash some forces against you, kind of thing. That's true. That's so. True. So you you will have to favor that guy and that would be ethical in that circumstance, right? That's true. You will have to think of what are the alternatives. What options do you have? How much fight you can? What is it that you should do? And uh, sometimes take a transfer. In Indian system, they are not doing other than transfer. Any other violence, any other thing is rare. Maximum transfer. Very rarely other kinds of violence are committed. So, and, and, and you know, many times honest people are preferred. Okay, politicians want work to be done and they know it can be done better through honest people. Okay, so it is not that honest man is discouraged everywhere. It is not like that. They want work, they want trust. Okay. They are respected. Okay. Command uh, support, but if they behave well, if if they insult others, if they don't, if they are uncooperative, then that is different. So they develop their own culture, network of connections. Some people. So it is a it is a kind of what to ignore, what to take seriously, who is powerful enough, who is not powerful enough. 
and also politicians also they don't come directly and then ask you things they will have they will have some idea of what kind of person you are if you are generally honest people don't approach for with the dishonest things they will approach for different things where honesty is required <laughs> if you are known for dishonesty then you will get some postings some positions some it is like that is not that the people are forced to be uh, dishonest if you are if you are honest some one line is there and dishonest other lines are there so politicians sues they don't want to force everybody they just honest they honest man they'll keep him in his place like that so people monitor people have advanced information they will know your weaknesses whether you can be bribed or not bribed it is like that it is not true that if you are honest people will always complain and then say it is honest it is not that like that many will appreciate approve but some problems here and there it is like that honest people develop their own circles their own strengths dishonest people will have their own it is like that remember honest people have an advantage they are very clear conscience and uh, clear conscience and uh, they have connections with with many good people here and there okay so they will have their own supporters people people support it is like that though they have problems so honest people not possible they have their own likes okay so it is not like that dishonesty is forced it is not like that okay just the dishonest bureaucrats are given some postings and honest bureaucrats are given some other postings politicians basically what do politicians want they want certain things done okay so whoever think is more capable they will they will put it sometimes honesty is many times honesty is an advantage some scheme implementation is a, is a huge advantage but election official duties or for politicians it is a minister is a disadvantage but to opposition it is an advantage okay hmm. sir uh, one so honest more. people develop respect respect there is no doubt about it hmm. sir uh, like you have also mentioned one case uh, hmm. like Uh, whether uh, to attend a felicitation arranged by a caste group mm -hmm. so uh, like if such a question comes like uh, i even i have a opinion that if we accept it would be showing our uh, community or caste partial feeling or something like that so can we express like we will reject that but anyway we cannot hurt the other person but somehow we can escape these kind of things how can we handle so if this kind of questions come yeah it depends on uh, how you take it you can attend and yet still uh, be non partisan with others or you need not attend both my position is that if you belong to a backward community discriminated community you should attend i feel that group consciousness for under represented groups is a good thing it strengthens democracy but group consciousness for the privileged people does something bad to the democracy i am i am for mala association and I'm against reddy association so groups help groupism is not wrong so for what purpose that groupism is used is an issue a woman officer can relate to woman one community can relate to that community there is nothing wrong so as long as how one is using and how is one seen to be doing appearances it is like that okay so there is nothing wrong in going
and remember to an officer people come for variety of purposes you can't really say what is the right purpose wrong purpose a good officer is the one whoever comes will use for right purpose that's all they organize something like charities or some health funds so they will ask to contribute okay as long as that money is used then that is good is like that so uh, people come for variety of motives variety of reasons they just want to be seen around so as long as the officer is clear these are the people coming for these reasons but i will use them for the benefit of the people as long as i am doing this that's a good approach because when you want to mobilize people when you want to call who will come people will come right so all kinds of people will come so as you do you know basically if you are seen as a good officer many good people will come so if a police officer did something against i mean in favor of women many women many groups will come we will support you we will help us like that it is your image that defines so as you do good things you associate yourself with good people as you do bad things then you associate with with a different group okay it is not that you are alone if you are good but i would say a lot depends upon how you manage i would prefer gandhian approach rather than the approach followed in movies make him an enemy not like that okay be friendly with everybody you be clear about what you should do and take everybody's help for the betterment rather than make anybody a villain and uh, target not necessary not necessary to make anybody a bad person Fine next class is on monday